On October the 16th, 1972, a Cessna 310C operated by Pan Alaska Airways and piloted by Don Johns, a military veteran with 17,000 hours of flight time and 15 years as a pilot in Alaska, left Anchorage at 9am en route to Juneau, located in the southeastern part of the state. It was a flight that should have taken about three and a half hours. The passengers on the plane were Louisiana Congressman Hal Boggs, 58, the U.S. House of Representatives Majority Leader, Alaska Congressman Nick Begich, 40, and his aide, Russell Brown, 37. The three men planned to attend an election rally for Begich in Juneau. The weather was not good, and Juneau was also surrounded by fog. In addition to poor visibility, the forecast also predicted icy rain and fierce headwinds. With this combination of bad weather, it was not surprising when the plane failed to reach destination and was later declared missing. The US immediately launched the largest search and rescue mission on record up until that time, lasting 39 days. The rescue mission included 40 military aircraft and 50 civilian planes, covering over 325,000 square miles. After a thorough search that totaled 3,600 flight hours, no wreckage was ever located, and officials believe the plane had probably crashed or sank into the Prince William Sound, always buried in ice and snow. Unfortunately, plane crashes were common in Alaska, and poor weather contributes to many of the accidents. To make a living, a commercial pilot in Alaska often has to fly in dangerous weather, and the pilot, Don Jans, was considered a risk taker and would often take chances in bad weather. However, questions still needed to be asked on how the Cessna met its fate, such as did it hit a mountain in the fog? Was there severe turbulence or was there ice on the wings? Any of these factors could have caused it to crash. On December the 29th, the search was terminated and the men were declared dead. In the days following the disappearance of the Cessna, there were reports of strange radio calls and other electronic communications that baffled investigators. Immediately after the plane disappeared, the US Coast Guard station in Long Beach, California received a mysterious call claiming he knew where the plane had crashed, stating that he had access to electronic equipment and was able to provide detailed directions to the coordinates of the downed plane. The FBI found the source credible and the information reliable. The FBI interviewed the man, where he came across as rational, intelligent, but strange. There was no record of whether the coordinates were ever followed up. Things became more mysterious when over the following days, several ham radio operators in Northern California reported that they heard a transmission coming from someone on the crash plane, stating that there were survivors. Authorities were unable to pinpoint the location of where the transmission had come from and figured it was a hoax. In FBI files stated that the day after the plane disappeared, one of the search planes picked up a signal some miles from Juneau, where searchers believe was a crash locator beacon, and then heard another weaker signal 150 miles northeast of Anchorage, which was in the opposite direction to where they were heading, but failed to pinpoint either signal. However, the National Transportation Safety Board claimed that the Cessna was not equipped with the emergency beacon and the pilot did not possess a portable one. Investigators still did not know what caused the plane to crash. Conspiracy theories were now coming forward, believing that foul play may have been involved, as Hal Boggs was seen as an outspoken representative from Louisiana, who would probably have become the next Speaker of the House of Representatives. Hal Boggs was a Democrat who had been in Parliament for over 25 years. Boggs was also involved in the Warren Commission who investigated the assassination of President Kennedy, and rumour had it that he was not happy with the findings and wanted to open a fresh investigation. It appears that Boggs had collected quite a few enemies in his time in politics. Around 11.30pm on July the 23rd, 1970, and two years before he disappeared on the plane, Boggs was run off the road by a Lincoln Continental in Washington, D.C. Boggs then chased the car and got close enough to record the number plate of the vehicle. He immediately called the police, which would have been the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department. However, they claim that no record exists, and it appears the police never investigated the incident. 
Then in April 1971, Boggs alleged the FBI were tapping his phone, as well as other US representatives, and asked what they intended to do with the conversations they had taped. He then passed his accusations on to his lawyers, and when they finished their investigations, he would release all of the findings to the public. Boggs then entered into very dangerous waters when he called for the immediate resignation of FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, as he was absolutely certain the FBI had placed a tap on his phone. However, it appears Boggs was not the only person on the plane who had serious enemies. Seventy months after the plane disappeared, Congressman Nick Bogich's wife had remarried. The man's name was Jerry Max Pasley, who had ties to the Mafia, and the marriage only lasted two years. Years later, Pasley was convicted of murder and bombing that involved his ties with the Mafia. In 1994, whilst in prison in Arizona, he communicated with investigators from the Anchorage Police Department, the Alaska State Troopers, and the Arizona Department of Public Safety, claiming that he transported a bomb to Alaska in 1972. Because he was in prison for life, he wanted to come clean about the murder of the politicians and told the investigators that in 1972, a mafia lieutenant in Arizona had handed him a locked briefcase and ordered him to take the briefcase to Anchorage and hand it over to two men. The men told him something big was about to happen, where a short time later, the plane, Karen Boggs, Begich and the other man disappeared. Pasley said he then moved to Anchorage and later married Peg Begich, who he'd met through friends in Arizona. Peg Begich gave him a co-ownership in a bar along with one of the men to whom he handed the briefcase in 1972. One day when the man was drunk, he told Pasley the case he handed to him in Anchorage contained a high-tech bomb and he placed the bomb on the plane before it left on its last fatal flight. The investigators immediately notified the FBI, who sent agents to interview Pasley in 1995, where Pasley even agreed to take a polygraph test. Unfortunately, there is no evidence that the FBI ever gave him one, and then the FBI immediately shut down the investigation and failed to thoroughly investigate Pasley's claims that a bomb had been planted. All in all, there is a lot of evidence and dirty dealings that led to the deaths of Hal Boggs and Nick Begich, where Boggs threatened the FBI Director Hoover, the phone tapping and personal threats on his life and the FBI cover-ups and denials. There was the shady lifestyle of Congressman Begich's wife, Peg Begich, the Mafia, and a short-term marriage to a man heavily involved with the mob who claimed a bomb was planted on the plane. The disappearance of the Cessna, Karen Boggs, Begich and Brown still remains a mystery today. 